Hello folks, now since we have talked about EBS volumes, its features and its utility, let's talk about how many type of EBS volumes are there. Now first of all, understand that when we are talking about volumes, we are basically talking about hard disks. Now traditional hard disks used to have a movable part where there will be a disk and there will be a pointer rotating over it. You might have seen it in the older computer systems and even in some of the laptops we have that kind of disk. That's called hard disk drive. Now we have another kind of disk these days which is called solid state device. Solid state device looks just like a chip. So there is no moving part in this. This is advanced versions of your disks. It has got better performance etc. And of course it has got a higher price. So from a high level perspective there are actually two kinds of disk. One is hard disk drive HDD and another one we call it solid state device or SSD. So SDD is traditionally what we had and SSD is a bit new and high performing disk type. Now AWS provides you multiple volume types. So it totally provides you five types of volumes. So we have got general purpose volumes, provisioned IUPS, throughput optimized, cold SSD and magnetic disks. Now out of, out of these magnetic disk is previous generation disk. You still have a choice to select that but AWS doesn't recommend magnetic disk. So let's here talk about various volume types which are of current generation. So from a very high level point there is SSD and then there is a SGD. So under SSD you've got general purpose volumes and you've got provisioned IOPS volume. Before we move ahead let's clarify one more thing. Now when you go to the disks and when you have to measure the performance of the disk, there are two main criteria to measure its performance. One of them is input output per second. So this means how many transactions you can do in one second. That is how many input, output or read, write transactions you can do per second. That's a IUPS for you. Second measure is what is the throughput of your disk. That means how much data you can transfer from the system to the disk. So you've got IUPS on one hand and throughput on the other hand. So some of the volumes would have IUPS as their main performance criteria and for other volumes there would be throughput as their main performance indicator. So that will depend on your use case what kind of application you are running. Do you focus more on the number of transactions that are happening with your disk or do you focus more on the throughput the data that you can transfer from your system to the disk as your primary criteria. So the most common EBS volume that we have is general purpose one this is also called gp2 general purpose version 2 it's a ssd based volume it's good for variety of workloads where you don't have much of a specific criteria to select from then you got provisioned iops so this is the highest performance ssd volume that we have this is used for mission critical low latency and high throughput workloads the third one is throughput optimized sdd remember this is not ssd this is hdd so of course since it is sdd so it would be of low cost. It is designed for frequently accessed but throughput intensive workloads. Now then we have got cold SDD. Cold itself means it's infrequently accessed. So again cold SDD is basically a lowest cost because it's SDD and it is designed for less frequently accessed workload. So please understand that all these EBS volumes will differ on the pricing aspect as well. We need to focus on what kind of use case is suitable for what kind of volume. So this table precisely tells you that what kind of use case requires what kind of EVS volume. Now another differentiating factor, another criteria that we need to always keep in mind while selecting EBS volume is that whether they are a boot volume or not. There are some volume types on which you can keep the data but you cannot use them as a root volume which means you cannot boot an application on those particular volumes. And that is why if you remember when you launch an EC2 instance then for the root volume you will see only three options when you select storage. But when you add extra disk for that you will find that in your drop down there are five volumes all these volumes are visible there. So to understand use cases general purpose as the name suggests is used for most of the workloads when you don't have any specific needs. It is used for virtual desktop. It can be used as a boot volume, used for low latency interactive applications and used for development and test environments. Now applications that require sustained and high IOPS you would go for provisioned IOPS. So in the provisioned IOPS it gives you very high IOPS and you can also specify that how much IOPS do you want. It is used for large database workloads 
So in things like your NoSQL databases, databases, wherever high number of transactions are being performed, you would go for provisioned IUPS. Now hard disk drives, as I said, they are cheaper. So whenever you have the use case where you have to put a lot of data, something like say a data warehouse or for storing your log data or for your big data applications, you will go for throughput optimized SDD. So basically wherever the streaming workload is higher, you don't have much of a transactional workload but a streaming workload, then you will go for throughput optimized SDD. So cold SDD is basically lowest cost storage. It is used for less frequently used data and most suitable where you just have to keep your data which has high volume but which is being accessed less frequently. Now you cannot use cold SDD as a boot volume as well. Now with different volume comes to different restrictions. So the size of the volume varies based on the volume types. And this is the performance criteria that we use either IUPS or throughput. So basically when you go to more details, maximum IUPS or maximum throughput is given on based on per volume as well as based on per instance. So keep in mind when you look at the limit of various volume types, and also keep in mind that these criteria are subject to change. So please refer to the latest documentation before selecting a particular volume. So whatever you see in this particular video, this may change going forward. So as we discussed about, one thing you should keep it in mind is that these SSD storage are good for IUPS, which means transactional workloads. And SDDs are good for streaming workloads, where you can get more throughput rather than number of transactions. Now those were current generation ones. Now we also have got magnetic disk which is basically a previous generation volume. This make it discontinued going forward. This is used for workloads where data is less frequently accessed and throughput per volume is 40 to 90 MB per second. Maximum input output per second per volume is also very less compared to others that we have. To summarize it, general purpose SSDs are good if you want to keep a balance between price and performance for normal workloads. Provisioned IOPS is good for high IOPS requirements where you've got heavy transactional workloads. Throughput optimized is for big data applications and data warehouses. Cold SSD is for infrequently accessed workloads and for high volume data. Magnetic disks are no more recommended. They've got less IOPS and used for infrequently accessed workloads. Out of these, Throughput optimized SAD and cold SAD are not bootable. So that means you cannot use them as a root volume. So that's all that we have in EBS volume types. Now you understand that EBS volumes will be using along with EC2 instances, along with data warehouses, along with databases. So while creating all those services, you need to select your EBS. And that is why it is important that you understand that which EBS volume is best for which use case. So that's all we have in this particular video. See you soon in the next video. Thank you for watching.